The first question you will ask, what is this old guy? By the way, I, I will be celebrating my 59th birthday very soon, okay? What is this old guy in a suit doing here? What do we expect to learn from this guy? Yeah, I'm old. If you do a Google search on me, you found that I was an engineer, then I became a businessman. Now I'm, I run a university, okay? So, sounds like a very boring background. But let me just tell you, it is actually very exciting. Now let's talk about engineering. How many of you are engineers? Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Okay. In the 70s, again, I'm old, okay? So you have to take the time way back, okay? I was proud to work for a company, a little company at that time called Intel. And I was one of the 15 member or so team uh, designing the chip called 8088 that went into the first IBM PC. And that changed the world. That's very exciting, right? But what's even more exciting is, in the 70s, I worked for an entity called Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and I actually was one of the 300 engineers that helped build an unmanned spacecraft called Voyager. Now, how many of you know what Voyager is? Okay, you watch Star Trek movie, right? <laughs> All right, I'm a Trekkie too. Okay, so Voyager is still working. The first Voyager went up in 1977. Okay, 1979. There were two Voyagers, by the way, okay? And today, the Voyager went past by Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, exited the solar system, and NASA last year, Christmas, said the Voyager is in interstellar space. Okay, this is a Voyager. That I but what's important is, on the Voyager, each one, every engineer that responsible for building it, his or her voice, photo, a store on the Voyager. So in case someday some alien being uh, managed to get to Voyager, they will be able to see me. So in other words, when I'm long dead and gone, there may be some aliens still be able to identify me. So that's very exciting, okay? So, okay. But just in case I'm still living, in the next 20 or 30 years or so, an alien come look for me, I'll make sure I bring them to American International School so you can see them. So that's really, really uh, sounds exciting. But what happened next is I became a businessman. Wow. This guy, very boring, very practical, trying to make bucks. That's what he wants to do, make money. I wasn't a very good businessman at the beginning, but I learned very quickly. You notice why I'm wearing my suit today, so, okay, so I can afford my suit. Um, I've done very well, but I couldn't build a billion dollar a year operation. When I say a billion, I mean US dollar, okay? I'm not mean Hong Kong dollar. I do not mean Hong Kong. Hong Kong is about 7.8 times away. So, the, the largest I got to about 350 million US. Then what happened here is I found out I couldn't compete with the big guys. I have to sell my company. Okay? That was a tough part. So what I did is I changed my mind. I began to work for the NGO, for the university. So the first NGO I worked for was called Cyberport. That was a U.S. billion dollar project. That certainly wasn't a billion dollar a year operation. Okay? But I Cyberport, this is where I really, really, really touches on innovation and technology. It was very, very exciting, okay? Cyberport, it was fun, okay? I met a lot of young entrepreneurs. I'm sure some of you will be become entrepreneurs. They are very, so passionate about starting out a very simple idea as a business. But unfortunately, 99% of them will fail, but they still think that was fun. And then there was another thing that I did was uh, Cyberport is I, I built up this craze for digital media, digital entertainment at Cyberport. And I invited one of the visitors that visited Cyberport. His name was Richard Taylor. Richard Taylor was a gentleman behind the well-known movie Lord of the Rings, Avatar, and the latest one is called The Hobbit. How many of you have seen any of these three movies? Oh, I'm in good hands. So you know who they are. Richard Taylor is the guy who, you, who took the technology and put into the movies. Now, if you watch those movies, the first reaction is, wow, okay? And believe me, he's putting on more magic, 
Okay, so he came to Cyberport, and he really, you know, contributed a lot of fun to Cyberport. And at that time, it was very, very exciting. So then comes the boring part. I moved on. I went to PolyU. Now, PolyU is a billion dollar a year operation, U.S. billion. Okay, it is. It's a huge university. You probably question the reason why it's a billion dollar a year is the government funded too well, right? No, no. Actually, about half of PolyU's revenue is in education. The other half is really ex education. Now, the gentleman who spoke here talked about ev revolution, evolution, education. I want to share with you university has changed. And the evolution that he's asking for, begging for, is actually happening. We use new media today to teach people, okay? All right, I just, this is probably you. We use new media to teach people, okay? We let the student invent things when they're being educated, okay? There are things called social media that change the landscape. Okay, we use the new concepts called flip. How many of you know what flip is? Okay, great. Very few. Flip is a new concept. It's instead of going to class for lecture, you, you go to classes on, on your laptop. You can see it any time, 24 by 7. But then you go to classes to work with your peers and then do your homework and project to get together. So it's a flip of what the old education is. That revolution is happening. Okay? It's actually happening. So learning is, is very fun. So today, I, I, I brag along about myself, but I want to sort of set the stage for what I'm going to talk to you about. It's a very simple thing, okay? So you know who I am, but the next thing I'm going to tell you is something that's very, very important for innovation, okay? The tech world today is not just about gadgets. Okay? It's not just about being cool. Oh, have you, how, have you, have you seen the Facebook today? Okay, and all that, you, you know, seeing somebody's blog. No. It's actually, everything about technology is actually centering around human beings. Okay? But a lot of people let technology run their lives. But at the same time, I want to introduce a concept, okay, that called soft technology that enables you to take the humanity out of technology and then become a true expert in technology that can innovate. So 10 years ago, or not 10 years ago, back in, back in 1896, when uh, radio was invented, people were scared because they thought radio would be used to spread the wrong information. Okay? And 2,000 years earlier, when books were invented, Socrates, you know who Socrates is, he was scared because he thought the book would make, put him out of business. Okay? So technology is actually very scary. Especially technology at the rate today is fat, moving so fast. Okay? Ten years ago, we still read newspaper. How many of you read newspaper today still? Wow. Most of you just probably read it on your smartphone, right? Okay, but don't forget about 10 years ago, there's something called a dot com. We all go to CN.com. How many of you still go to CN.com? Oops, see? Bad news for CNN. So, but today the news also changed. Okay, instead of, uh, you know, talking about something that was probably relevant to the old people like me, you know, you talk about the deflation of Hong Kong's rubber duck. The big duck in the, the harbor, you know, things like that. Okay, about the, uh, the filibustering happening in the, uh, in the ledge code and all that. Those things made the news. Now, one of the useful things to know is Hong Kong and Hong Kong, we're very blessed. Okay, we are called the most digital city by Economist magazine, and they got this one right because we can use digital technology to do big things as well as small things, okay? I use my octopus car every day to go to 7-Eleven, go ding, 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 and also, you know, you take the buses. These are the things that we do every day. We, we are in touch with technology, whether we, 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 we realize it or not, but we're using it. 
and they're going to become more useful because octopus, if you remember, it contains a lot of personal data. There was a big scandal about our personal data being leaked out and so and being used for unscrupulous purposes. Okay, so these are the things that we have to watch out for. So technology is very scary, but on the other hand, technology can also help the disadvantage. Okay, now if you look at Steve Jobs, everybody knows who Steve Jobs is. He came from a very poor family. He never graduated from college, but yet he used technology to get to the top of the world. Okay, Justin Bieber. He was he came from a very poor single parent Canadian family, but yet. Today, you know, after posting him his own video on YouTube, he became an overnight sensation, a teenage heartthrob. He's not long, no longer a teenager. He's still a teenager. I don't know how many listen to Justin Bieber. Oops, <laughs> wrong example. <laughs> But I do want to say that there's a student in India that invented a gyroscope that's responsible for having the or right orientation in your Cell phone today, smartphone today. It's by a student in India. Surprise! And at PolyU today, we work on stuff, boring stuff like anti-cancer drugs. Okay, but we all work on that. Okay, so the technology can help, can can be, can can help the disadvantages. But it is wonderful, but it it doesn't always work very very well. Okay, uh, to you. You think about you take Google Map. You can download Bruno Mars、uh, soundtrack. Those are the relevant thing. But what is important here is technology doesn't always work. I'll give you a good example. Airports. Hong Kong airport, fifty mi fifty five million passengers per year. It's the best airport in the world. But guess what? On the same side of the world, there's one airport that I know in China. That's empty. It's got everything that Hong Kong Airport has. Now I, I shall not name it because I'm afraid of being prosecuted by the communist government. <laughs> okay, but they're actually there. Okay, that airport sits empty. Okay, so what happened? You ask yourself, what happened? What happened is when they designed the airport, they forgot something. They put in all the hard technology. They forgot about the soft technology. So what you end up with is a beautiful airport that's almost as good as Hong Kong Airport, but perhaps not to the same scale. But no passengers. In fact, in one year they had about a hundred passengers. Okay, it's very scary. This is these are the facts. So technology, per se, hardware, the bits, the bytes, the the the, the, the smartphones, okay, and all the iPhones, the iPad. But on the other side, you have the soft technology, which are the processes, the experience, the training, the education, the intuition that is stored between your ears, right here, right here. Now, if you think about how iPhone came into existence, now when iPhone first came, people say. Nobody's going to buy a five hundred U.S. dollars phone when you can buy the Nokia phone for less than three hundred dollars. Okay, that does everything. But today, where is Nokia? Okay, and the difference is Apple used soft technology, really, really, knock Nokia out of the business. Okay, of course they are facing other issues right now, but that's really what happened. Facebook today wouldn't be as popular as dominant without the smartphone. Facebook, when it first went IPO, the stock actually went went through the bottom. It actually uh, uh, went down rather than going up. The underwriter was sweating. But what happened is the smartphone saved Facebook. Today, Facebook is thriving. Even I have to worry about what Facebook says about me every day. What about Polly? You? Social media is not something we can ignore. So, let's talk about what is soft technology. The first gentleman to talk about soft technology is Sir John Daniel. Okay, I won't read that out. You can read it, but that is his thinking. And if you read it, okay, very very carefully, 
is the, the key words are processes, approach, sets of rules, and models of organization. Those are the final sentence. That is soft technology. Okay. So back to the two airport. What's missing is a soft technology today. Soft technology is a, it's more than just a, than ergonomics. Okay. It's about decision making. Okay. A lot of time we hold a piece or any instrument, it helps us to make decisions. If you think about it, it's very, very important. Okay? And one of the most, most interesting uh, examples that I can give you is a road sign. Okay? Remember, in the old days, it says, turn right, turn left. But believe me, people get confused because your right is my left, my left is your right. But the road sign works out very well. But guess what? If you have too many road signs, it's very confusing too. So, uh, because the time is up, so I will just uh, summarize by saying, uh, don't put your trust in machines. Trust your intu intuitions, because machine will not fix your human problems. Okay? Think about process, training, education. Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon which can be used to change the world. But what's more important here, I will borrow a quote from the US President Barack Obama. What you make of your education will decide nothing less than the future of this country. And what you're learning in school today will determine whether we as a nation can meet our greatest challenge in the future. Thank you.